So, so I have to say, uh, this presentation goes a lot better with uh, beer. Five, beer. five kegs of beer. But, but we'll get through it. <laughs> so, how many people here have used oak smoked wheat malt? Drink. Oak smoked what? Oh, wheat malt. Meat malt. Do we drink every time you say that phrase? <laughs> You're supposed to drink every time I say that phrase, yes, Mike. That's what I made. That's what I made everyone in the presentation do that day. So that's why you got to that, That's why I got such a high rating. So how many here have had or have made a grotzer? Nope. Even less. Okay. So does everyone know what a grotzer is? No. So a grotzer is kind of a, a Polish ale that they, it's a starting gravity around 1040. Okay. Uh, so it's about, what, three and a half percent, three percent, something like that. Uh, ale. It's made of 100 percent smoked wheat malt. Is everyone drinking? So, uh, so, so I, I've made a grotzer before. So back, I, Don and I, and I, even uh, before uh, the first year. So I've gone to a number of homebrew. Now it's called HomebrewCon. Used to be called the Homebrew Conference, National Conference. So the one year was in Philadelphia, and I thought, well, I, I like historical German beers, and the grotzer is a German Polish historical beer. So that year I thought, well, I'm going to make a goes and a grotzer and take it to our uh, club night event with the saws. So I, I get my beers out there and I start doing a little research. So Philadelphia, there's a lot of German ancestry around Philadelphia. And I, I find all these breweries already making grotzers out there. It was way before anyone around here heard of grotzer or a goes. Uh, but I took my beers out there and they were well received. So um, a couple years ago at the St. Paul, when the conference was in St. Paul, Minnesota, I made, uh, I did a presentation on smoked beers uh, using beechwood smoked malt, cherry smoked malt. There's another one. Oh, an oak smoked malt. Oak smoke wheat malt. Yeah, I'm supposed to drink now. Uh, and uh, so I made uh, three Heffy Wisens at that present for that presentation with the, the different three different uh, smoked malts, and then I had a rock beer in um, that. So this time uh, or last year, the conference was in Providence. It was again easy to drive to, so I thought I'll submit a proposal on other smoked beers with oak smoked wheat malt other than a grotzer. Cheers. Cheers again. Cheers. Cheers. We're getting it now. So, so that's how we got here. Uh, so then I had to decide what, what beers am I making, okay? Uh, so I like Saison, and I've had some Saisons that had smoked malt in them. Have has anyone had one before? Yeah, I was probably at this one. Okay. <laughs> oh, was that in Providence? Where? This? Did you have the Oaks sit down in Providence? Yeah, Tim, you missed that day. Uh, well, I was there, I just wasn't, I didn't show up. So, so I made a, a Oak Smoked Wheat Malt Saison. <laughs> and then I, I like, uh, Firestone Walker makes a ESB called uh, uh, Union Jack. Anyone have that? Yeah. yeah. It's a very good uh, ESB that they uh, actually uh, they do the Burton system, which is using oak barrels to ferment it and such. So I did a oak smoked wheat malt. Oak aged ESB. <laughs> well, I'll say that quickly. 
Yeah. At least half of you are drinking. <laughs> And then, so, so one of my favorite beers, I have a lot of favorite beers, but one of my favorite beers is uh, Schlinkler at Christmas time makes an oak smoke wheat, oak smoke wheat, Doppelbach. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> has, has anyone had that beer? Okay, more, more. So it comes in, uh, it has a green label on. It's usually released in December or so. Uh, so I had to make, well, I've done that clone before. Uh, and Donna and I got it to the finals. It didn't place, but it made it to the finals the year I entered it. So I had to do that one again. And then I did a oak smoke wheat malt American barley wine. Very good. Uh, which now, when I think about this a year later, I probably should have called it an oak smoke wheat, American wheat wine. <laughs> and then lastly, I thought, well, I want to make an oak smoked sour beer. What? <laughs> so I, um, I said, okay, I'm going to do a, a Berliner Weiss. The oak, you know, wheat is 50% or more of a Berliner Weiss, so my oak smoked wheat malt would take up that portion of the grist. And, and then I thought I'll put peaches in it. And we'll get into this a little bit more. It's a little more detailed than that. So then we'll move on, otherwise we'll be here all night. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so it's uh, <laughs> So what is oak smoke malt? It's uh, <laughs> very good. So it's a uh, it's all wheat, right? High enzymatic activity. So maybe when you think of oak, you think of harsh smoke, but it isn't. It's very mild has a lot of nice vanilla notes to it. Uh, a little clove, maybe a little honey character, some banana. Uh, again, it comes from Germany. So now I think we all know, well, we all know there's micro maltsters in the United States and some of these micro maltsters in Pennsylvania, I think there's one in Massachusetts, They'll, they're doing uh, smoked malts. But otherwise, the only place to get this is from Wireman. Um, and BSG is the distributor of Wireman in the United States. So if you go to your homebrew shop, you can even buy just like 10 pounds at a time. Uh, so you got the work color here, it's a very light color. Protein content, moisture, uh, diastatic power. So it, it's very, con it's pretty well convertible. 100%? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, so, the, that's well, the Grotzer. Yeah, the Grotzer is 100%. It, a recipe is 100% that. So if you take uh, and go to Wireman's page, this is the flavor wheel. So again, you can see it has a lot of wood, smoky, little clove, uh, malt, sweetness, biscuit character. Um, so again, this is the Grotzer recipe. Ooh, nice head. Thanks. Yeah. One thing about wheat malt, a little bit of wheat malt, any beer gives you some good head. <laughs> so I, w I wish you... <laughs> so, th so this is a um, so this is a uh, smoked uh, saison, but it's not a. Uh, I think they did use when I look. I was looking for pictures of beers that would go with my presentation. I think they use a little bit of oak smoked wheat malt in this beer with some beechwood. So it's, the one I made was stri uh, standard strength, uh, original gravity around 1055, 
finishing at around 2, ABV about 7, 28 IBUs, and then I use a combination of the DuPont and uh, French Saison yeast. If you have any questions on, so I use 29% uh, oak smoke wheat because I didn't want to use, I didn't want to cover uh, the Saison characteristics of the beer. So this is my actual grain bill, uh, mash time, a little rye malt for spicy character, some Vienna for toastiness, spistle spalt and styrene goldings. Uh, I always uh, carbonate uh, with uh, corn sugar. I like natural carbonated beer. I think it, it holds yeah. up much better. You can't it, 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 in a keg? In a keg, yep. Yeah. Just do it the same way you would at the bottom. Just take a cup of water. So for like this beer, I try to use about 3.7 or 3.8 ounces of corn sugar, boil that up in uh, dechlorinated water, and uh, pour it in my keg. So what that also does, unless you're close transferring it also that re-fermentation, that natural carbonation is using up oxygen in that keg. So uh, I, I just feel you get a better, uh, a better life, shelf life out of the beer. You spun the beer or no? No, I don't. I, uh, I'll get, I'll, I'll degas it if it gets a little high, carbonated. Carbonation gets a little high, I'll degas it a little, but uh, you know, the yeast that are left in there that ferment out, they drop to the bottom and most of the yeast I use are very sticky. They say flock, you know, use a little gelatin or some biofine or something. Um, do you ever stop fermentation that way though? No, if, if you think of it as a big bottle, then he puts the right amount of sugar in there, so that's that. How do you know Paul was talking? <laughs> Go I gotta Go smoke I gotta smoke pills for you. Do you? No. <laughs> you didn't mention a smoke pill. <laughs> Pressure gauge on there? How do you how can you tell if you got too much? Uh, I know how much sugar. Well, there's so there's charts that that show you carbonation based on temperature and amount of sugar. But I know you know I've done enough brewing that I know if I'm doing a German lager, I want about 3.5 ounces of sugar to a cup of. If I'm doing something British, I'll go down around three ounces. But I'm trying to get a big, uh, heavy carbonation, I'll go a little higher, 3.7 to 3.8. Um, so this is kind of the, the tasting notes. Again, you get some uh, spiciness from the rye and the yeast black pepper phenols, and you have this medium low oak smoke vanilla character, which are phenols again, and then some uh, medium low orange citrus esters. Again, you get very good head retention with uh, wheat in general, anyway. So this was a nice beer. <coughs> so then I moved on. So again, you gotta, you kind of gotta take, a, close your eyes while you're drinking and think you're drinking an oak smoke wheat malt. Cheers. Cheers. That's the Yorkstown Oak ESB. So in this, in this one, actually I caked the oak smoke wheat uh, my box today. Um, <laughs> it's, it's naturally carbonating, Tim. <laughs> We have CO2 here, don't worry about it. Don't fuck over to your house next month. You'll be okay with forced carbonate. So, so this one I used 34% uh, oak smoke wheat malt. 
And then they each on oak cubes for, uh, I believe it was about three weeks. Maybe I have it in my notes here. But again, I went by the BJCP style guidelines for an ESB. You can see my, my grist, my recipe. So why did you combine the cubes and try to change the cubes? Oh, 30 days, so four weeks. So, so again, the Union Jack from uh, Firestone Walker, they age in oak. So I wanted to get that. So I had like this double vanilla yeah. going on. Uh, so this is like one of my favorite beers. One of my good friends that's in the size made a comment that didn't need to be said, but he goes, I don't like this beer. <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. So again, you get some earthy, woody notes, a lot of vanilla, a touch of caramel. You had a nice ESB background. Again, the, the oak, if you go back, so you're looking at these hops. These hops all have earthy, woody character to them as well. So the oak... Uh, goes with them, I believe, real well. So again, this is one of my favorite beers. The Schwinkler Doppelbach, released at Christmas time. Uh, so this is 100% oak smoke wheat malt as well. Uh, <laughs> very good. Uh, so as everyone, I, I believe everyone here knows, so Schwinkler, all they do is make smoked beer and all the other beers they make has beechwood smoke. Is that wrong, Tim? No, that's, well, what's wrong is the Doppelbach is it, not made with wheat. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, no? Maybe Christmas one. Wasn't a green label, that's a dipper. Is it is it oak green, smoke pilsner? The green label is the oak. Is that the label? But that's a that's a wheat beer. How yeah. do you get a wheat beer as a doppelbach? Doppelbach's a lager. Wait, let's see. Right here, right here. It's this big. They make it like a doppelbach. Well, it's two different. Okay, but it's two different beers. It's, it's a Christmas beer. It's not a doppelbach. Yeah. I'm just wondering what. It is a double block. Double block. Can't get a Christmas lager. You look at the yeast too. It's Christmas. It's not a Weizenbach. No, it's not a Weizenbach. It's a double block. The green, the green labeled one. Yeah. Yeah. Look for it. Actually, uh, Grumpy probably could get it. I've, I've actually had it. I uh, know I didn't have it on tap, but. I, I did find it in bottles uh, last year. I didn't look so hard this year, but uh, the Der uh, Brausmeister had it in bottles uh, last year and bought them out. Um, so you're the one. Oh, Hanzo, yeah, Hanzo will have it too, probably. Right, yeah. With a with a so so brewery attached. Banana curry. No, it's a great curry. With banana curry. So this is the this is the recipe here. Again, uh, so you have that nice clean lager character. So the oak smoked wheat malt vanilla. Character comes off really nice uh, in this beer. And then we had the oak smoked American barley wine, which, well, again, I, I guess I I could call it. So I thought I had this higher at 50 percent. So I guess it's not a wheat wine, but it almost is a wheat wine. After thinking back a year later. How do you determine what percentage you want to put in? Just just your flavor and that you are imagining in your mind yep. what you want? So again, out of all, all of these first four beers, 
I've only made the previous one before. I kind of took it from notes off of our Swinkler's website. But these other four, I've, uh, it was trying to come up with a recipe to balance the oak smoke character with the base beer. So this one, um, did, did, so did, did anyone in here have this? So this is old, old Guardian oak smoked barley wine. No. Yeah, so they make old garley, old Guardian smoked barley wine, I believe. But this, I think, was a special year. This is a number of years ago that they made this. That's why I was wondering if anyone. I never had it either. Uh, so again, this is my uh, recipe here. So this is very similar to our American barley wine recipe, except for this portion right here. So it's a you know a big strong beer with a little. Do you, do you use the sugar in there just, just to bring up the ABV? Come on, come on, come on. The sugar? The sugar? Yeah. The sugar right here? Yeah. Is to, is, well, so this this corn sugar is very fermentable, so it brings up your ABV without leaving any residual. Because uh, so, it ferments out completely. So, yep, yeah, a little bit. So you don't. So instead of you know, if you didn't put that sugar in there, you would maybe be at 1024 here, okay? Where it dries it out a little bit more. That's a good question. So yeah, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people put corn sugar in uh, in their IPAs or double IPAs or triple IPAs. It, it can if you put too much corn sugar in, though, it'll leave a biting alcohol taste. So this beer, this beer and the oak smoked wheat Doppelbach were like two months old when we drank them um, at the presentation and they drank really well. So this is uh, the, probably the most interesting beer, uh, oak smoked Berliner Weiss with peaches. So again, a Berliner Weiss has at least 50% uh, wheat malt, in this case, oak smoked wheat malt. Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, 1040 original gravity, so finished very dry. So one thing I, I'd never done before was a Piddle Sour beer. I, when I've made uh, Berliner Weisses in the past, I've always uh, uh, boiled them, cooled them, put my lactobacillus in for a few days, and then followed with the ale yeast, the German ale yeast. <coughs> so this one, I thought, let's, let's do uh, a yogurt uh, kettle sour. So I, I uh, used... Um, some plain Chobani and plain Danon uh, Greek yogurt and made a, a starter with that. Um, and I thought I had it in here. I don't think I do. No, I don't. So there's, um, between them two yogurts, if you look on the different cultures, um, there's like, Two of them were similar, one was different, so there's a little bit different uh, uh, bacteria, lactobacillus cultures, in the two yogurts. So then I boiled for like 15 minutes, cooled to um, 120, a little lower than 120, pitched into my boil kettle, 
my yogurt starter, and then it was about 36 hours later, I was at a pH of 3.5. So I boiled again for another 15, 20 minutes, cooled, and then pitched. At that time, I had some free uh, Safe Ale 05. Pitched that in there, and then um, after that primary fermentation was done, I used 12 pounds of peaches, and to me this added this preservative free uh, peach jam, a pound and a half, really bumped up the peach flavor, uh, at least in my mind it did. <clears throat> So here's, uh, here's a recipe. Again, yep, make sure you have no sulfites if you do use peach jam. Sulfites will uh, help prevent any uh, fermentation or natural carbonation. Uh, so this beer, when you went to uh, drink it, it, it actually had, and I think it's from just that little bit of yogurt, it kind of had a, a creaminess with the peaches of like a milk, even though there's no lactose or anything in here, it had this peaches and cream sour uh, character to it. Uh, it was very, very unique. Uh, and uh, everyone, it, it had uh, very good reviews from everyone in the audience, they seemed to. So I had uh, someone contact me after the presentation, and they were in Florida, and they used uh, mangoes instead. I told him he should use a little more mangoes than he did. Uh, it came out real well, though. Uh, it was a little lacking on the mangoes. That's one thing in fruit beers. You, you really need to, if you think you have enough fruit, you need to add more. The other thing I did here, I cooked my peaches uh, up to like 125 or a little higher. So especially if you're using uh, fresh uh, fruit, uh, at this temperature you're killing off any uh, coliforms or potential um, unwanted bacteria. So I guess... Um, does anyone have any questions? About what? <laughs> <laughs> you got to say it. We still got beer in our glass. <laughs> 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 oh, Does anyone have any questions? I have a refill. Oh, yeah. 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 oh, 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 What's that over here? No. You use two different types of yeast. Would you use the main when you in one. The, the initial recipe you showed us? Which one? The initial recipe. Oh, the saison. Yeah, it had yeah. different kinds of yeast. Yeah. Was it a primary or a secondary? Or no, it... I, so I've done it both ways. This time I pitched them at the same time, mm -hmm. but normally I would put the DuPont yeast in a few days early first and, and then wait like three or four days and then put the French saison. So the, the French saison, is, it, it helps the DuPont yeast can stop. Uh, stall out at, on you if you don't give it enough time where the French Saison will just keep eating away uh, at the fermentable sugars and dry out your Saison very nicely. Um, do you use oak smoked barley malt? Close enough. No, I have never got I don't. I, so maybe some micro maltsters have it, but I, I haven't never seen. All right. Yep. Good question though. Smoke you can smoke your own. Which do you mean bear malt? Yeah. Are you talking about bear malt? Oak, oak, smoked. oak smoked. This is probably yeah. bear malt. Yeah, yeah. oak smoked bear malt. You mentioned your oak. Make, made by own? Yeah. Are they just cubes of oak? <laughs> okay. Yeah, toasted uh, so like medium toast Hungarian cubes. If you would use in wine. So you can buy little packets of, uh, of toasted. No, toasted. 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 This is toasted. Toast Me, I like medium. I like Hungarian medium. Hungarian. 
Now, I, I've never over-smoked a beer, but I think, again, in some of these more delicate recipes like the Saison and such, again, you only want to use a low level of the smoke so you don't override the other flavors and aromas. Same if you've ever had uh, the, and I forget what, the Beechwood smoked Hellas. So that beer again is about 20% uh, beechwood smoke. So it's a delicate balance where uh, a true rock beer is like 80, 90%. Uh, yeah. Are these mostly available at homebrew shops around, or do you have to the, make the malt? Yeah. The malt. So so you can uh, uh, in Cleveland here again if you if they don't have it they can order it or in Akron in the Grape and Granary. Uh, they can order the old smoked malt. They don't get a lot of uh, requests for it, but they can order it for you. And like, like I said, the smaller quantity is a 10 pound bag, which works well. So, so oh. first of all, um, I'm, I'm currently working at the brew shop. And yes, we have these, including peen and cherry and smoke. But um, as I've learned, um, and I'd like to ask Larry this question, um, how do you uh, manage the smokiness of the malt? Because you buy it, it ages. You buy it, you take it home, it sits in the store, it sits. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. trying to work on like. So it. over the years, the again, so I make smoked beers every year. So over the years, I have bought an old smoked malt, and it's just much duller. And even if you use a higher percentage you still don't get that same quality out of it. But I've kept a good bag over a year, rolled up in a plastic container, and it, it held up real well. So the, the, the stuff that I bought old must have been really old. So, so you need to kind of, sounds like you need to calibrate your nose and your mind, like that bottom yeah. grain, you stick your head in the back yeah. and kind of tell. Yeah, you can you can kind of tell. So again, that's why the Grape and Granary doesn't have it. Uh, only special order for the old smoke. They have Beechwood smoke there, I know, but it, yeah, and the cherry I think holds up much more. It's a very strong, pungent uh, smoke character in that one. Uh, anyone else? Any other questions? Tim. So the, the oak beer, was that the Saison that was done in, the original recipe was done in oak barrels? What, what no. beer was done in oak barrels? The ESB. ESB. No, not in oak barrels, with oak, Hungarian toasted oak cubes. No, that's what you did. You said the original, <laughs> the original recipe. Oh, Union Jack. Yeah, Union Jack, Firestone Union Jack. It's not smoked, but it's aged in oak barrels. All right, and were and those? My question is, were they new oak barrels or were they used? Yeah, I think they used new. I don't know how many times they use them, but they have a Burton system at Firestone Walker. Because that oak presence is going to be like 200 times greater oh, on yeah. a new barrel than a, than a used barrel. Oh, yeah. I so I wonder how it would be part of the recipe, no? If you, their recipe or my recipe? Well, to duplicate that recipe, you would have to know. Oh, yeah, no, I can't say mine was a exact clone of theirs because they're doing a burden system where they're fermenting in oak and then it transfers down to another oak barrel and then they transfer out of that. Uh, so it's only a couple weeks probably in oak in their well, system. Yeah, time, right. okay. that's, so it's that's much that's less, fun. but it does have a little oak character. Have you ever. If you ever get a chance, I, I don't know why Firestone Walker isn't in, in Ohio, but uh, if you go, if you get a chance to go to Illinois, to Benny's, or in New York State, uh, any other questions? I guess yeah. so I'm not particularly into smoked beers like historically. So what, what's a good entry point you know, in terms of style if I were to start making? I don't mind, like, which, what's the best style of beer to make? Do you like lagers? Yeah. Or, so I would do, I would do the Hellas, uh, the Beechwood smoked Hellas with like 20% in, in your recipe. Yeah, it's kind of like tough to enter, I feel like. The uh, yeah, I, you know, so, so 
If you look around at the brewing, the craft brewing community, there isn't a lot of smoked beers being made. And because they don't sell. Because <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's an acquired taste that uh, people, it, you know, once, if you like smoked meats and barbecue, you'll learn like a smoked beer, but. Like anything, there's an entry point. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, the only smoked beers I've ever made were smoked porters. Oh, smoked porters is a good entry point too. Yeah. Delicious beer. Yeah. And make a pepper porter, smoke ghost pepper porter. Awesome. Oh yeah. But it's you have that this is a whole different thing when you use peppers in it. But that smoked beer is delicious. Very good. Very good. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much.